today I want to talk to you about um, a subject that is um, probably a, a, one of the most popular misbeliefs about God in our American culture or version of American Christianity today, and that's that God wants you happy. Above all else, God wants you happy. I would love with all my heart to tell you above all else that God wants you happy. Above all else, God wants you to enjoy your life. Above all else, God only wants good things to happen in your life. Above all else, God never wants anything bad to happen in your life. Because the bottom line is, God wants you happy. In fact, we can change a scripture and uh, make it to our advantage if we want, but the scripture says, Rejoice in the Lord, you are righteous, and praise his holy name. Or we can say, May all who are godly be happy. This is one of the biggest, m big cultural mistakes in what people believe about God. They believe about all else that God wants us to be happy. If you believe that, it starts you down a road of a bunch of misbeliefs. God wants you happy. So let me show you a few, what I found to be, um, it's called the Theology of Happiness from Craig Grushel. He calls it that way. So let me um, go in and show you a couple of these things that he calls the theology of happiness. So if you're taking notes, number one is whatever makes me happy must be right. Whatever makes me unhappy must be wrong. I'll say that again real quick. Whatever makes me happy must be right, and whatever doesn't is you know, must be wrong. And number two, we start to believe that, you know, that discomfort, delay, risk, suffering, inconveniences and obstacles that can't possibly be God's will. In other words, if something isn't going right, then it must not be God working in my life. And number three, without knowing it, I begin to worship the false gods of comfort money, pleasure, and things. I believe about uh, above all else that God wants me happy. So one day I will worship false gods of comfort, money, pleasure, and things. Now hold on, here's the problem. When we believe above all else that God wants me happy, suddenly we force to believe that God exists to serve us. We have to understand, don't miss this, that God does not exist to serve us. We exist to serve God. So just so you don't miss it, let me say that again. God does not exist to serve us. We exist to serve Him. So if God is there to make me happy, suddenly we, or I, reduce the great creator, the sustainer of this universe, the holy one, down to a cosmic vending machine. Basically, I put my money in the machine, I press the button, I've done my part, and the machine gives me exactly what I asked for. And if it doesn't, I go and I complain and they go and change that for me. But literally, without knowing it, this is what some of us do. We reduce God down to some kind of formula. God, I said my prayers. I went to church this morning. I tried to do good things. I tried not to do the bad things. I gave a little money in the offering. I helped a little old lady cross the street this morning. I dodged my neighbor's annoying cat and didn't run into it. I've done all these things, so therefore my headaches should go away. The girl should want to go out with me. I should be able to get the job of my dreams. I should get the dream house that I've been waiting for. Because I put the money in and pressed the button, therefore God, you should do what I want you to do. Here's the problem with that misbelief. So many people end up walking away from God for totally, completely the wrong reason. 
because of the wrong belief. They say things like, probably heard it, I tried church. It didn't make me any happier. I tried religion. It didn't work. I tried the God thing. I even read my Bible for a while. And I still have my problems. I still have my diseases. My kids are still rebellion. My, my job, or it forces you to think that there's so many things that it forces you to believe that God failed. But God didn't fail. We started the wrong expectations, which led you into a very dangerous place. So some of you right now, as I tell you this, you're very depressed. You're like, hey, God doesn't want me to be happy. What in the world is this youth pastor telling me? He does all those cool things downstairs. He does all these happy and fun things. And you're telling me God doesn't want me happy? I do believe that God delights in your happiness. That, when you're happy, I believe it brings joy, just as many parents is delighted when a child has joy or happiness. For example, I have this newfound hobby. It's called fishing. Last year I brought, for Father's Day, I got a fishing license and a fishing pole to bring my kids fishing a year ago. My daughter loves to go fishing. She catches all the fish and I don't. We spend the time putting the worms on and every time that she goes, puts it in and so is my son when they go and they put it in. By the time I grab my rod and reel to throw it out there, it's, hey dad, either I got a fish or it's stuck in a tree or uh, it ate my worm, right? But we delight in it. They catch this little tiny fish that we don't even know how fit on the hook and they're jumping for joy and we delight and their happiness. But scenario B happens, where it could be as we go fishing, which Lily and I have at times, and we'll be fishing, and all of a sudden, she's not catching these little things anymore. She's catching the two, three pound bass, and I'm catching nothing. <laughs> and I need to delight in her happiness, and I do, I'm very excited. But if she caught one of these fish and pulled it out and jumped for joy and said, hey, uh, Dad, look! And I said, good job! And then all of a sudden she throws it on the ground and starts kicking and stopping out and killing it. My excitement is not going to be the same joy, is it? There's still correction within it. I tell you right now that we, got, we do get depressed when we think that God only wants us to be happy. So I want to do a couple things. I want to share two specific reasons with you that God doesn't want you happy. So, if again, if you're taking notes, uh, here's the reasons why that God doesn't want us to be happy. God does not want us to be happy when it causes you to do something wrong or unwise. Basically sinful or stupid. So many people do something that they believe is going to make them happy, and we're going to enjoy this. Yes, it's but it's wrong and it's unwise. This is going to be fun. This is going to make me happy. But it may be fun for a little while, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be right. The scripture says there is a way that seems right to man, but in the end, it leads to death. Here's the basic problem that so many people believe. Scripture says, or Scripture teaches us to be holy, but so many people translate it in 1 Peter 1.15. Write that down and check it out when you get home. But 1 Peter 1.15 says, But just as who called you is happy, so be happy in all you do. No, 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 no. That's not what it says. What it says is that God who called you is holy you were to be holy and set apart in all that we do. So when you believe, above all else, that God wants us to be happy, we end up doing things that are wrong and are and unwise in the pursuit of our happiness. But so many of us, 
We wrongly believe that, that above all else, God wants us to be happy. So that belief system empowers us to do what is actually wrong, and we justify it in our minds. Well, I thought that the speed limit was just a suggestion. You know, 150 miles an hour on a motorcycle feels great, right? No, you know, um, it happens all the time. God doesn't want you to be happy if it causes you to do something wrong or unwise. For example, we could say this. You decide to, you want to eat a pizza. Now, notice I didn't say a slice of pizza. <laughs> but I said to eat the whole pizza. So it might make you happy to have the whole pie. But for very quickly afterwards, it's going to have certain circumstances. <laughs> It's not going to be wise. But sometimes it still makes us happy while we're eating the whole pie. And the list goes on. My spouse isn't meeting my needs. I have needs. I got to look at this stuff. I know that some people don't think it's wrong. So, you know, our culture doesn't think it's wrong. So it's making me happy. So if it makes me happy, it's okay. For those that are not married yet and are Christians, premarital sex or socks. For those that you are followers, you know, lovemaking is a gift from God and is meant for the covenant of marriage. Yet so many of us, including Christians, believe that, hey, I don't care. It feels great, man. It's the culture. You got a test drive. We're in love. I have needs. It's okay. We're married in our hearts. And the list goes on and on. Our entertainment, think about it. So many people, so many of us, including myself, we go and we watch things that, you know what, are basically are entertained by sin. Pure filth. Funny, but filthy. Filthy funny. It's like, hey, well, you know what? Probably not honoring to God, but it's funny. And filthy. So, this funny doesn't make it wrong, right? No. Funny still can make it wrong, but it's funny. The second thing that God doesn't want you happy when it's only, now hear that, only, only based on things of this world. He doesn't want you happy when it's only based on the things in the world. If you watch a secular advertising, it's stunning what you need to be happy just last night, I was staying up, finishing this message, and I had to put this in because you know what? I found out on TV that there was three things that I need to be happy. I need a blanket with holes in it. It's called a Snuggie. I need this miracle lotion that is going to make me look like I'm 20 all the time. And I need this video workout, workout session that is going to make me look buff for the summer in just three weeks. <laughs> Here's the formula that the culture tells us is true. Basically, better possessions, newer, faster, shinier, bigger, whatever, plus peaceful circumstances, of course, the absence of conflict, the plus thrilling experiences, the perfect vacation, the fun experience, the big hit, the big thrill, the right relationship. Well, wait, if you're not right, I'll trade you in for something different, newer, younger, whatever. Plus, you know, the appearance, I can change that. I can make me different. I can change the way I look. I can, you know, do all of that things. But it's not, at the end, it's not happiness. If I have everything, does that make me happy? If you have it all. I saw once that it says, a person who dies with the most toys still dies. So if we have everything that makes us happy, are we missing out? The problem is, is that happiness is based on happenings, and happenings change. That's why no one's really happy all the time in this world, because they're simply counterfeits. Everything that we have that tries to make us happy is just for a moment. They're not the real thing. It's like when I go to the grocery store, Lindsay will tell me and send me to buy one thing. 
And I think it's a man's um, problem that we have two rules. Number one, we always get the wrong thing, and we never come back with just what was on the list. Sorry, it's just, my dad didn't teach me that. It's just, it's just in us. Don't worry, you'll, you'll experience sometimes. So every time I go, I experience this situation. I need double stuffed Oreos. I buy them because it makes me happy. Until I eat them in all like 20 minutes and they're all gone. And my wife is saying, where are they? I don't know. My kids are like, I didn't even get one. You know, and they call them, you know, by the name. I have to have the Oreos. I got to have double stuff. And you know what? I don't know why because I eat them so fast it doesn't matter. I don't even know the difference of the store brand of what they taste like, you know, because it's just too quick. But I'm not satisfied with the store brand. I have to have the best. This is exactly what the world does. If you get this, if you buy this, if you have this, if you trade this in, if you get the then, you're going to be happy. If you're still not happy, it's because God didn't want you to be happy when it's only based on the things of this world. In 1 John 2, 15 through 17, it says, Do not love the world for anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Let me just pause for a moment. That's some crazy stuff right there. If that doesn't convict you, it does to me. If the love of the world is, not, is in me and not the love of the Father is not in you. For everything in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, comes from the Father, not from this world but from this world. The world and the desires, they pass away. But whoever does the will of God lives forever. So God doesn't want you to be above all else. He, you know, to be happy when it causes you to do the wrong thing or something unwise. God doesn't want you to be happy when it's only um, based on things of this world. But God doesn't want you to be happy, but God wants you to be blessed. God has something far better than your happiness. He wants you to be blessed. Now, uh, you say blessed isn't blessed mean happy. I mean, we can say the same thing. The problem is I tell you, you know, God wants you blessed and people think, hey, uh, money means more money, perfect health, and so on. That's why blessed life is. When God wants you blessed, he doesn't mean that you have to have a bad day. It doesn't mean that your kids won't fight. It doesn't mean that your car won't break down. It definitely doesn't mean you're not going to get a zit before the prom. These things happen. What it means is you'll experience the goodness of God in the middle of some of the difficulty times of your life. Your happiness and the blessings are not based on the perfect of pain-free life. God promises that. Hey, in fact, Jesus said, in this world, you will have trouble. You want to see a promise? He says it. But he says, take heart, I've overcome this world. The problem is we're looking for a pain-free environment, and we don't have it. Then we start to blame God when the reality is God wants, our active, wants to be active in our lives during our pain-filled life because we live in a sinful world, broken just means, or just because you're blessed, doesn't mean you're not going to have trials. It doesn't mean you're not going to feel weak. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have and be in storms in life. And in the middle of the storm, you could have a blessing. What is that blessing? The supernatural peace of God that goes beyond your human ability to ever understand or ever comprehend. The peace that guards you, your heart and your mind and your soul in Christ Jesus. Some of you even today, you're in the middle of a storm. You're in a moment and the peace of God can move in your hearts and suddenly you recognize, I trust him even though in the middle of the storm, it is not fun. 
You can be in the middle of a trial. You never choose what you're going to go through right now. You feel like you don't even have what it takes to go on. And yet, for some reason, the presence of God is so strong in your life, you can have an unspeakable joy. A joy unspeakable that the Scripture scripture talks about. And the joy that wells up from deep within inside. People are like, hey, how do you have that? Why are you so happy during this? It's because it only comes from God. And those that are mature in Christ, we begin to recognize that you can actually rejoice in your sufferings and your trials because you know that developing perseverance in you, it's not fun, but perseverance must finish its work so you may be mature and complete in Christ, not lacking anything. So you may be through enough trials that you recognize, I never choose them again. But I am who I am today because I'm conformed me into the image of Christ. When I walk through this, I know him more intimately. When I walk with him more faithfully, I'm experienced in the goodness of God in a way that I couldn't have on a good day, on a happy day. But I found the goodness on, the, on that I would have not chosen. It's the blessings. In March, I was quickly diagnosed with a tumor in the eye. One day, just working on the computer, and boom, my eye goes blurry. And two days later, I'm in a doctor's office, and they're saying, I hope you have good insurance because you have a tumor and it's melanoma. And my life stops. And the questions start to rise. Well, God, I'm doing your will. God, I'm doing your things. I'm supposed to be happy. I'm supposed to be doing these things. This thing doesn't happen to me. And in a blurb, in a quickness, I'm, I'm going from one place to another. I'm driving down to Tufts. I'm, I'm in Boston trying to figure out what it is and how it is. And I'm sitting there figuring out, well, is it something I did? Is it something that, that I'm going through that, that I did wrong? Is there sin in my life? Is there things? And we all think those things. Man, did God just forget about me? And you're like, hey, but Brian, you're a pastor. Yes, I still have those same feelings, guys. I'm human. But you know what? Within all of that, there was still a peace that said, I am God, and be still, because he knows what's going on. That tumor ends up being a tumor that only 2,000 people were received or, or are diagnosed in a year worldwide. And it's not because of good looks. Uh, <laughs> It's, it's not because of, of light colored eyes. It's not because of, of you know, anything. It's just the fact of that it's my journey to walk. And that's what I've started right from the start, that I was going to look at this of a different perspective. That God didn't do this to me. God allowed it to happen. Because we live in a sinful world, in a broken world. And I'm going to walk this through a journey of being blessed. Not necessarily being happy, but being blessed. I found out that there is some good diagnosis to it. I found out that, hey, there's only one, you only need to have one procedure. And it was a radiation, it's called gamma knife radiation. I get to turn into the Hulk. And I find out that I have to wear this huge metal halo on my head for six and a half hours. And they pin it in there and do some cool stuff with it that I bow down to those that God has blessed with technology and science because God does some pretty cool things through the minds of people that helps us to be healed. And you know... They tell you all these things that are going to happen. Boom, 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 boom. And it's going to be done. And you have 95% success rate. And this is going to happen. And that's going to happen. This is going to happen. And so on and so forth. And you're going through it. And and you're like, man, you know, even the nurse, they put the stuff on. And I said, hey, I need to take a selfie. She goes, what are you nuts? 
I said, no, I gotta take a selfie of it. I'm like, I'm only gonna experience this once. I said, nobody's gonna believe this. Check this out. <laughs> right? Well, why? It's looking at the good stuff. And I'm not happy to have it on my head. I wasn't happy to be diagnosed with it, but I'm going to not pursue in happenings. I believe that God has blessed me, and I believe God has blessed all of you. He put us on this earth for a purpose, and not one person is, 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 what's the word I'm looking for? Because I went off my notes. Um, is, is not sanctioned for hell. He wants all. It's every son and daughter loves you all. But it's not in the pursuit of happiness and happenings. It's in the pursuit of being blessed. In other words, we seek God. We enjoy God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then everything will be added onto you. As we pursue God and his, and his object is our affection, we're not pursuing happiness. We're pursuing God. And when we are pursuing God, suddenly we enjoy his presence. Suddenly we're delighted in him. Suddenly then he gives us not, hey, everything that I humanly want, but he gives us the desires of my heart. And what he does is he gives us his desires and our desires become his desires. Then we pray accordingly to his will. And he gives us what we pray for because we're praying specifically for his will. Suddenly, I'm enjoying God. I'm soft. I'm pliable. We're soft. We're pliable. I, I'm, we're conformed to the image of God. He is, we're receiving His desires. We're not praying my will. We're praying His will. Suddenly, I'm lived, we are living a blessed life. A blessed life. Not the perfect life. Not the pain-free life. But something that is better than happiness. A joy that is unspeakable. A peace. Something that nobody, nothing, not anyone in this world can remove from you from inside. Because it's an unspeakable joy that lives on forever and ever. His supernatural strength, when I'm completely weak, gives me strength. His supernatural life, His super meaning of our natural, suddenly His power, His presence, He carries us through things. It's explained like this. When we close out, I'm going to close out Max Locato. I was reading a story. I'm going to change it a little bit to make it my own, but he says this. He goes, if you take a fish and put it out on the beach, would the fish be happy? Yes or no? Come on, this is not, you know, it's not rhetorical. It's a, you know, uh, work with me, right? We're going to put them on the beach. Is the fish happy? No. no. Why? No. There's no water, right? So it, the fish, it's going to go, hoop, 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 right? But let's say we give that fish that's sitting on the beach, we give him a big wad of cash of $100,000. Is the fish happy now? No. no. We give it a lounge chair. We give it a Corona beer that everyone says it's good. We give them a Playfish magazine. Is the fish happy? <laughs> you like that, right? Some of you are hesitating. <sighs> but you're not sure. Ooh, you know, look at that fish. He's enjoying his life. You know, we look at the magazine. We look at the, we'll look at the commercials and see of our life of being happy. Well, you know why? Why is not the fish happy? Because the fish was not created to be in the sand. The fish was created for the ocean. So it's case in point, guys, for you have everything in this world has to offer. You will ultimately not be lasting and happy. The answer is no. Why we're not going to be happy is because you were not created for earth. We weren't created to stay here. We were created to created for heaven. We were created for eternity. This earth is just a quick little blip. We're here for a little while. Then we're gone. You're created to glorify God of the universe. He is not here to serve us. We're here to serve Him. The time that we're here, which is just little, we can't be selfish. We need to be reaching out and showing the love of God. 
But some of you, you know it. You've tried everything that you can. You partied your brains out. You've consumed everything that you could. You've rearranged your body. You've traded your girlfriend or boyfriend for others. You could get this job in this city and that job in that city. And nothing fulfills it. Why? Because you were not created to be satisfied for this world. It's all counterfeit. There's something so much more. It's life solely submitted to God. I belong to you. You lead me. You guide me. You take me. My gifts are yours. My heart is yours. My passion is yours. My life is yours. Help me to walk in faith and not by sight. Give me the words to say to make a difference today. My hands are your hands. My feet are your feet. Use them. My mouth is your mouth. Give me the words to be a blessing in this world. Suddenly, you're delighting yourself in the Lord. And if you give him the desire of your heart, your desires become his desires. You're praying. You're living a blessed life. Doesn't mean a perfect life. Doesn't mean a pain-free life. But it's a blessed life by the presence of God. The doctors have told me that, hey, when I went through all this, yes, I, I'm glad I have good eye vision in my left eye. My right eye, because it's so close to the optic nerve, they're saying that I'm going to lose most of it except for looking over my nose. I don't have any of my peripheral I can't see over here. But I'm still living a blessed life. I'm still having a blessed time. I've looked at it, and I don't want to even put myself on a pedestal, but it's taken me some time to even change the way I look at life. When we're home, my kids make me laugh. When I first was diagnosed and had an eye patch on, they said, I said, guys, let's go play video games. And they were like, sweet, it's the first time I'm going to beat dad because he's only got one eye. <laughs> and you could be like, ugh, right? No, but it's, you laugh it off. It's, it's part of life. But I know one thing. When I see Jesus face to face, I'll be able to see him with two great eyes. I'll be able to walk and jump for the rest of my life. I won't have to worry about turning around and running into things. If I do, I'm sorry. I apologize. Because I will run into you. Not meaning to. But it's not about our happiness. It's about the pursuit of being blessed. Therefore, we need to lower expectations of earth because we're not created to enjoy all the expectations of this earth and go and disappear. We're here for created above all else for God and for heaven. And God doesn't want you to be happy when it causes you to do something sinful or unwise. God doesn't want you to be happy when it's based on the things of this world. And God has something far better for you. God wants you to be blessed. God wants you to be more than happy. He wants you to be tapping into his goodness no matter what in everything you do. God is working together for good for those who love him and are called into his purpose. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for this afternoon or this morning. Lord, I, we've said some pretty strong stuff. But Lord, I pray that you would help us to pursue in being blessed. This culture is so much about being happy. Whatever you do and however you feel to make you happy is good. And it's not going to hurt anyone else around you. But Lord, it's going to ultimately hurt everyone around us, including ourselves and our eternity. And Lord, I pray this morning that if there's someone here that does not know you, that they would take a moment to find someone to talk to. to say, hey, what is that Jesus they've been talking about? And how do I get that, how do I get the being blessed and rather than searching to be happy? And Lord, I pray that you would help us to continue to see the, the bigger picture that we're only on this earth for a little bit. That we're here to, to be a blessing to others. We're here to be your hands and to be your feet. And Lord, help us to put you first 
and to put others second and to put ourselves last. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.